welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners of class 12, we are doing the first lesson from a supplementary reader, Vistas, the third level. We have done the first lesson and this is the episode 2, part 2 of the third level, first lesson in the supplementary reader. Learners with me is Amit and of course you will together revisit the story, understand better, or recall, recapitulate whatever has been learnt in the first part, then interpret it further. So, Amit, we get into the story for deeper understanding. Let me tell the objectives lesson to the learners. Sure. Of course, the objectives are at the end of the lesson, you will be able to understand the story better, interpret it uh, in many layers, do the character sketch, how the characters are behaving and why and how they are behaving, and also you will extrapolate from the story the themes and the use, language used by the writer to bring in the emotions and ideas. That's what fine. Okay, come on. Amit, quickly let us recapitulate the story. So, sure. you start with sure. whatever we have. Sure. Hello, friends. So, in the last episode, we did a summary of um, this uh, short story, the third level. And let's quickly recapitulate it. So, Charlie is a 31-year-old man who lives in... New York. He says that he's an ordinary man dressing in gabardine suits like everyone. So he does not feel that he is lost or unhappy. Or he intends to say that everybody is lost and unhappy in New York or every big city. So what happens is that one day he is going home to his wife Louisa and he has to take a train from the second level and he gets lost in the maze of the Grand Central Station, which he says is like the root of a tree. Mm -hmm. And so, he gets into a tunnel and gets lost in it and eventually he finds himself all alone where he can only hear the echoes of his own footsteps. And he finds himself at the third level. And then, maybe now then right. you can tell something right. about the third level. Yeah, at the third level, as he walks into the tunnel, then he hears only his footsteps and some strange noises. Uh, then, when he went, uh, he went get into the third level, which is actually not there. And which should not be there, because yes. everybody feels that there is no third level, right. or nobody knows the third level to exist. Yes, but everybody, in a way, slips into it, maybe, yeah. sometimes. So, he, he, he found things appear to be in, what he says, 1890s, 90s. 90s, that is 19th century end. The gas uh, light flickering, and everything old, antique uh, things, and the man at the counter when he went to buy a uh, ticket, uh, he say, when he gives the today's money, 1950s money, he says that, are you trying to cheat me? Yeah. So, uh, you, you can't go uh, far away, kind of thing. Then, in, he tells his psychiatric, the psychiatrist friend that this is what is happening. The psychiatrist friend feels that uh, Charlie is hallucinating in a way. He is unhappy. He, is, he wants to escape from reality. Then his wife is initially excited and later worried and she tells him not to look for the third, third level. level. So, the third level is actually, he is in 1894 and he confirms it by looking at the newspaper, The World, which has information about President Cleveland and uh, railway strikes, which is not mentioned in the story, but um, just to add to the historical context, in 1894 there were lots of union strikes and army was called in to suppress the strike and so on and so forth. Uh, so, he believes that he has seen 1894 with his own eyes. So, he goes to the market and buys old money from the 19th century with his new money. So, he pays $300 and gets about $200 in return in old money and he hopes to get back to the third level again and board a train to Galesburg, Illinois where he spent his um, childhood. Yeah. to escape from the city hustle and bustle. But after much trying, he cannot find the third level um, ever again. Meanwhile, his friend Sam disappears. And the narrator, who is Charlie himself, says that Sam is a city boy and he had gotten tired of the city, the hustle and the bustle and the daily grind and he has probably escaped to the third level, that is 1894. Yeah, true. Then, Charlie now looks into his stamp collection 
and the envelopes and he finds one first day cover. Then as we discussed in the part one, first day cover is the new envelope. Or a new stamp. A new stamp uh, in, uh, released on an occasion and people write their address and post to themselves. So he, he f finds a first day cover. But generally, first in his grandfather's uh, collection. Uh, yeah, with, uh, in, in his uh, grandfather's selection, generally uh, first day cover has a blank paper, but here there is a letter written. And the letter says, who is writing to whom? Sam is writing to? Charlie. Charlie. Then? Sam is writing to the future Charlie. The future Charlie. That was mm. his, uh, <coughs> Sam. In a way, was his grandfather. Later, we found that the Sam is no, uh, uh, nothing but, none but. The psychiatrist friend Sam. <coughs> so this is what the story. Then his wife also somehow believes, or uh, with doubt, that uh, third level exists. And Sam in the letter also writes, "Yes, there's a third level. I went there. I got the lemonade or something." So this is what the story is, uh, learners. We have just quickly recapitulated it for you. You read it. We hope. We believe that you must have read it. Now let's take up some some ideas, some of the activities to understand deeper the story. Okay. First of all, let me ask you, Amit, um, there are some twists in the story. Yeah. So, what are the twists in the story, number one? Two, can you, can you cite from some other stories? Sure. So, what you just mentioned is the twist in the tale. That is the term that is used, mm -hmm. twist in the tale, T-A-L-E. It's of, of course a pun on T A I L as well, like tales are twisted. So a pun is a word which has a double meaning and is often used in literature. Shakespeare used it vehemently and very successfully. After that, lots of writers have used it. So a twist in the tale. Here the twist in the tale is that um, Charlie keeps talking about two characters. Sam Wiener, the friend, who is not explored much and psychiatrist who keeps thinking that it's his wish fulfillment, that he's hallucinating, that he's a split personality, and so on and so forth. Eventually, we get to learn that Sam the friend has escaped to 1894. In the end, we learn that Sam himself is the psychiatrist. And there's another twist in the tale. There's a double twist, made yeah. Nathan in this. What, what is that? The second twist is that the first cover should be a blank letter. It's not. So a person writing to himself. And so this is the grandfather writing to himself. So the grandfather is also the friend in future. But the main shocking twist is that the friend is the psychiatrist. So this is the psychiatrist who's been suggesting that that Charlie is hallucinating actually himself picks up the idea and goes to eighteen ninety four, looks for the third the floor. He himself gets uh, enamored and enchanted by the idea and keeps looking for the third level on Grand Central and finds it and escapes himself. So it's a very twisted end. And uh, so this is called the twist in the tale. Fine. And this was a trope in 19th century short story writing as, as well as 20th century short story writing. So all the major writers of the world use this technique. So a short story is short. It cannot, like a novel, explore characters in great detail. So it relies on a shock. It relies on one idea, one theme that it explores. It's got a beginning, middle and end. And the end is supposed to shock you out of your wits. Just all in a sudden. Yes. <laughs> so for example, I'll tell you some very good stories. The Diamond Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. So there's a couple who has to go to a ball ceremony. And the wife does not have good jewelry. So she asks from a rich friend, borrows a diamond necklace, loses it on that night. She's too embarrassed to report it to her friend. So they buy a diamond necklace on loan and she has to repay the loan for the next 20 years, oh. um, okay. you know, scrubbing every inch of her house herself without any help, doing multiple odd jobs. In the end, we get to know that the necklace was a fake necklace. Oh, <laughs> the, yeah. the, one, uh, the original one she gave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's oh. interesting. Yeah. Another short story um, in this kind of ending is The Bet by Anton Chekhov, where there's a discussion about capital punishment, much like what we're having across the world um, right now. So an old banker lays a wager on a young man if he could stay in an isolated room for 20 years. The young man is about 25, the banker is about 45. 
And the banker thinks that nobody can stay in confinement for 20 odd years, but the man successful stays for 20 years. Oh. It's a beautifully written story about the kind of books he reads, the experiences he goes through. And he decides one day before the end of 20 years that he'll exit, that he'll quit and go away because money does not mean anything to him, that he's lost 20 years of his life. On the other hand, the banker, now having gotten bankrupt and poor, cannot pay that kind of money or if he pays that kind of money, he will become completely bankrupt. Oh. So he decides to kill this chap um, and he goes and reads that he's written a letter, he's, he's fallen asleep and he's written a letter about him jumping out of the window just before um, uh, the, end, the end of the contract. And um, so it could have been an end where he could have been killed, but he's asleep and eventually he does escape just one day before um, the contract ends. So these kind of stories with a twist in the tale gained a lot of attention and popularity in 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, now people do write differently, but still it's a very strong trope of short story writing. And as we have seen in this story as well, True. the psychiatrist um, ultimately falls into the same enchantment, the same ena enamorment that, that Charlie has fallen into. Yeah. So learners, how we can learn to write short stories? This is for learners to kind of take away. So how short story is written. Yeah. Some examples from Indian writers. Sure. So Prem Chand, for example, God lives in the punch. The original title is Punch Parmeshwar. Okay. So there are two friends, one Hindu, one Muslim. They are best friends. They have lived their life together in a village. Over some dispute, um, when one of them is the punch, the jury member, the judgment is against the friend and after which he gets really angry and they become vowed enemies um, after that. And then tables turn and the second one now is going to be the judge on the case of the first one. Oh. And so it looks like he would take revenge for what had happened earlier. But at the last moment, his conscience awakens and he realizes that he is not a person but an office. That a judge is an office and not a person and so he gives the right verdict and a fair verdict. And <clears throat> so that's also a twist in the tale where the expected line is that there, it would be a sort of a revenge drama but there is redemption um, through the office of the judge. And so Prem Chand wrote such idealistic stories which was uh, with a view of building modern India and a dream India and an idealistic um, India. So this is also in line with the same twist in the tale. Another great master who indulges in twist in the tale is Manto, whose stories like Thand Thanda Ghosh or Toba Tek Singh are um, uh, very important. So Toba Tek Singh, for example, is fascinating. Yes. There's um, also movies and uh, TV serials made on it. So there's a man called Toba Tek Singh. Mm and a place called Toba Tek Singh. And Toba Tek Singh is a madman. Yes. And where he lives happens to fall in the territory where the Radcliffe line is being drawn yeah. between. And so the madhouse is divided into two. Um, and so the madmen are being taken to the Pakistan side. And this man Toba Tek Singh asks, where am I being taken? True. And, um, um, and so when he realizes that he's being displaced, he starts running and he says Toba Tek Singh will go to Toba Tek Singh. So. And he eventually falls dead on a fence in the village, which is Toba Tek Singh. So the place and the person become the same and the absurdity and the madness of partition is uh, shown, where the madman is the most intelligent man or the sane man. Uh, in this atmosphere of madness. So there are lots of very good examples of twist in the tale in um, Indian literature as well. That's great. That's great. Learners, three or four examples of how a short story gets twisted in order to bring up an end also uh, some a kind of message to be uh, uh, learnt by the reader. If you happen to read uh, the short story of um, um, short stories of Mando, you will understand how uh, traumatic partition um, the, the, the experience was. That's fine. Uh, thank you, Amit, uh, for, for narrating those uh, stories as well as drawing the attention of learners to us how the twist can make the story very interesting. We are going to describe Charlie, his characteristics, his actions, and his thinking, and why he is hallucinating, and how he goes back to past and what is his what are the what are his dilemmas
Come on, uh, Amit. Let's do it. You do Charlie. Sure. Uh, and his characteristics, and in a way, describing the character of the sure. person. So I think Charlie is an ordinary man of the 1950s America. And and a youth, no? In 30s, 19. See, he's 30 and 31 years old. Yeah, he was youth. He was young. He was 31. At the same time, he is extraordinary while being ordinary. Okay. How do, how do you say that? Because he lives in a world of fantasy. He, he actually goes to 1894 or he dreams of escaping an idyllic hmm. past. An idyllic past, yeah. That, that, Why that. does he want to go to an idyllic past? Because this time, 1950, is not a good time in America, not a good time in the world at all. Because the world war has just ended in 1945 and the young people were very anxious. And there were lots of insecurity, fear. There were no good jobs at this point of time. The economy was in shatters. So he also suffers from anxiety and um, probably depression. True. Uh, which is what manifests in this fantasy, one could say. And Amongst and other things about Charlie is that he is a very creative person because the story that he tells has nuances, has a lot of sense of history. So actually our friends, the students can look up the history of President Roosevelt or President Cleveland. Mm, of the 1894. Yeah, Cleveland was in 1894 mm -hmm. when there was a major railway strike and they should research about it. And apart from these, um, we can see that the narrator is also Charlie. And so he is very creative in telling the story as well as building it up um, to this wonderful end where we learn that it's actually Sam the psychiatrist who has who also has anxiety and depression and slips back to split personality <laughs> probably uh, rather than Charlie himself. So it is reality check in that sense as well. Learners? This is what the uh, description of Charlie, which, which, which Amit has done it. Also, from his uh, a, an ordinary man with the extraordinary thinking, dreamer, everything. Then he wants to escape the psychiatrist field. That he wants to escape and unhappy. Fine, learners. Let me describe Sam. Amit, I'm saying that Sam is a friend first. Hmm. Fine. That is what we know about yeah, him. Yeah, uh, that's what we know about him. Good friend. Hmm. And he is a city bred man. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's a city bred boy and wants to also go to the village, yeah. escape from the harsh realities of the, the city. false life of city. So, in a way, wants to escape. So this is also one of the themes of the chapter, right. the rural urban divide, which we also feel. feel and keep talking about here as well. Fine. And also, <coughs> most people who come, Mikhail from village, come to city to settle down, till the end they have some sort of affinity towards the uh, rural uh, places and and any given point of time they would like to escape. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what even many of us feel that. Then later in the story towards the end we come to know the Sam is none but the psychiatrist. psychiatrist. So that is one. Who is a very different person from Sam the friend. The psychiatrist is kind of professional. Is professional, he believes in fact, he believes in reality. So, um, and no fantasy like Sam the friend. So, should I say this way? This Sam the psychiatrist lives in reality, but Sam the friend, the man, wants mm. to escape. Yeah. So, a kind of dualism, yeah. even in Sam, the yeah. way uh, Charlie also has that. Yeah. He, uh, Later, so this is a common trait in all the three characters that they have two faces. Uh, Charlie is an ordinary man but is an extraordinary thinker, creative person. Sam is a f good friend is, uh, who, who is a dreamer where Sam the psychiatrist believes in hard-boiled reality. Fine. Louisa yes. also, yes. Uh, we, Louisa is actually a minor character um, of the story who has who comes only as a reported speech. Uh, one never sees her. In fact, uh, Sam also is also a prop in the story. But Louisa is is a very small uh, prop in the story in the sense that Charlie wants to go meet her 
and all these things happen. But, but, she is initially but, but, but excited. Later something changes. In her. Yeah, okay. yeah. Once she realizes that this could alter their lives in the sense that if Sam is losing his mind, mm. not paying attention to his daily work, uh, his office or, an or ordinary, his personal ordinary work. wife. Yeah. She is excited, we said. Then what else? Well, initially um, we see that she is also very grounded. Fine. In terms of a regular wife who has to earn a living and so they have to lead a strugglesome life in New York City. Okay. So she has to be practically grounded. But she also shares the dream of escape along with Charlie in the sense that she is excited about uh, this third platform. And later she gets perplexed that her husband is losing his uh, mind. Okay. And so she gets really worried. So she also, like the other two characters, is caught between a dream and a reality. Fine. A dream and an escape and a reality. Okay. Now, now the question is, it's not revealed, but however, to the learner and you, I ask you, does he know about, does he also want to slip into the past, the way Charlie and Sam did? She does. We read that in um, Sam's letter to Charlie, where he says, like, come on. Charlie and Louisa, keep up the spirit, try to find the third um, level. And so, we do not know from her own mouth, but we do know it in reported speech that she also shares this excitement somewhere. Okay. Can, can you put it in one sentence? All three are living the same kind of... Uh, dichotomy. Yes, that's what. Yeah. The between reality and escape. Uh, yeah. The dichotomy is the pull, uh, pull between... And so, this is a metaphor for modern life itself, okay. that we all are caught in this situation of an urban modernity and wanting to escape, and which is why we keep posting Facebook pictures of Himalayas and ocean and this and that of villages, but we want to inhabit the city. So, to summarize the character traits of um, Louisa, she is an ordinary housewife who is grounded, but at the same time, she also shares the dream of Charlie to escape. And so she is excited. She is caught in this dichotomy between reality and escape. And eventually we get to know from Sam's letter to Charlie that she does share the excitement. Fine. So that is about Louisa. Fine. Thank, thank you, thank, thank you, Amit Padar. Learners, uh, we will give you an assignment at the end, at the end of this uh, episode, uh, writing the character sketches of all three people, or at least Charlie and Sam. Uh, but before that, let me ask you to read some of the sure. expressions there so that the learners get the gist of it to understand how a writer uses effective language to make the story, the ideas very strong and deep. Come on. So I'll read out some extracts um, where the beauty of this story is the brevity of language. True. <laughs> So, the lesser you speak, the more that is told. Um, I will give examples and then come to the idea as well. So, the story begins with, and a story must have a good beginning. That's, that's for all aspiring creative writers. I quote, The presidents of New York Central and the New York New Haven and Hartford Railroads will swear on a stack of timetables that there are only two. But I say there are three because I have been on the third level of the Grand Central Station. Now, let us look here. First, he talks about swearing on what? Timetable, not the Bible, not the Gita, but the timetable. So, making the timetable and therefore railway something of uh, a spiritual exercise because it is a journey. And so, it is a, it's a shocking beginning. It's people swearing on, on the timetable. Uh, and for the railway or any transport, <laughs> timetable is as good as? Uh, 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 holy book. Absolutely. Right. And he does not say what. He says, I say there are three, other people say there are two. He does not say there are two levels. And then he says, third level of Grand Central Station. <laughs> and then, yes, I have taken the obvious step. I talked to a psychiatrist friend of mine. So, there are lots of shocking things right at the beginning. Swearing on a timetable, there are not uh, two but three and I have been to a psychiatrist. So, it is all very intriguing. He, he himself tells that the, uh, it cannot be believed. <laughs> yeah. And so, he kind of pulls you into the story completely with this intriguing beginning, with this mysterious beginning. And so, that is the hallmark of good writing, good writing. to say things very briefly and leave something out. So, which uh, is called the 
iceberg effect. Oh, yeah. Just, just give the one eighth of what is actually to be known. The oh. iceberg is only one eighth visible yeah. above yeah. the. The most powerful line which kept reappearing in our discussion is. Sometimes I think the Grand Central is growing like a tree, pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots. So, you have heard of personification where uh, objects are personified, they are given the metaphor of human beings, but True. here it is the opposite. Here it is the metaphor of a tree, a tree root. So, it is treefication, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like personification. Yeah. Yeah. So, there is a poem by Ben Johnson called The Noble Nature, where a person is compared with a tree, where the oak gives strength, but you cannot be like an oak because it can be dry and dead. So, a man also has to be like a, a tender like a lily. So, he does explore various facets of human personality in that. And similarly, here a city is the underworld of the city, the nether world, nether parts of a city are compared to a growing root. And so, if you take the root metaphor, if the city is a tree with leaves, um, it is underground is, is the roots of that tree. In which the city lives actually. <laughs> so, the dark part of the city, the basement of the city, and which also is a metaphor for its night life, its criminal underbelly and all other things what happen, uh, what is not visible to normal people. Is, is the root of the city is, is also very important. That's so, in, in a couple of lines, Jack Finney has said so, so much just, about just New York re City. Read out, read out the line again. Lines sure. again. Yeah. Sometimes I think the Grand Central is growing like a tree, pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots. Fine. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, learners. We have had a lot of discussion and reflection on the story, reflections on the story. We are going to ask you uh, to do some assignment as homework or school work, whatever you call it. Uh, write the character sketches of the two important characters in the story. One is Charlie, we have seen this uh, kind of web we created, uh, a myth created and I, I, I created in, uh, through the discussion Sam. Write this character sketch, sketches of these people bringing in all those points and also another assignment is the lot of things Amit talked about, we discussed on uh, the story, what does the story convey, what, what is the theme of the story. So, reflect on many, many points were brought in, urban, urban, rural uh, life, how a uh, modern human is uh, pressurized in tension with many things, uh, but at the same time we are dreaming. We want to live in cities, but we love the village life nicely. Amit brought out that. So, all those, what would be the theme in today's context? Then another thing about we we couldn't uh, have, uh, we could not discuss it. Uh, so it's about science fiction. So science let me fiction. request Amit to say something about it. Then we'll close it. Come on. So this falls in the genre of science fiction. The story. And science fiction is a fascinating field which many writers have dabbled in, Ray Bradbury, um, George Orwell, famous novels like Animal Farm in um, 1984, Isaac Asimov's Foundation series, we have Jayant Nar Narlikar, Narlikar Indian, writer, yeah. Indian writer and one of my very good friends and uh, writer Sami Ahmed Khan who wrote Aliens in Delhi. Oh. Um, yeah. So, science fiction is a paradox. Science believes in fact, something that is proven and tested and fiction is what is not fact. So, we are saying in effect fact fiction, what is fact fiction, what is science fiction? Mm -hmm. This is this is a question I am throwing to you, which um, you can answer mm -hmm. and, and send yeah. replies to us. We can also have a dedicated um, uh, session about science fiction someday later as well. So, thank you so much for being with us in this um, um, discussion over these two episodes and thank you Meghnathan yeah, for the wonderful Thank you Amit. Uh, learners, in order to uh, understand how we can write the character sketches and the theme, uh, here is a process uh, uh, which appears uh, before you, adopt that process, you jot down the ideas, make the outline, write the first draft, then revise it, uh, it is not mechanical in order to understand how a good write-up is developed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. We will meet you in the next lesson.
Thank you. Thanks a lot, Prince.